Oh, hey there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. Today, I'm very excited to check it out Dino Party from Ankama. This is for two to six players, ages uh, six plus. It'll take about 15 minutes to play. And in Dino Party, you are going to have these really cool, stinking looking dinosaur meeples that you're going to be trying to throw onto their habitat in the hopes of helping them mate by putting two dinosaurs onto different spots. But it's not going to be that easy because as the game progresses, throwing the dinosaurs will get increasingly difficult as you'll have certain restrictions on how you can throw. And also because, well, it's like the Ice Age and things are starting to melt, there's volcanoes, all sorts of bad stuff is going to be happening. It's a light, simple, family weight dinosaur dexterity game, but is it good? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. And we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Dino Party. So first and foremost, we have a handy dandy rule booklet. It's about uh, five, six pages, double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. It's very well done. It should have you up and running in no time at all. Also short, sweet, and to the point, uh, which is always a good thing with a family and children's game. So in Dino Party, you are going to be throwing your five dinosaurs onto the board with the hopes of mating them, putting two of them on the same spot like so. If you're able to do that, then they will have little dinosaur babies, and you will have more dinosaurs, and you're trying to have the most dinosaurs at the end of four rounds. But the throwing part is going to get progressively more difficult, as you will have certain limitations that you will have to deal with as you progress through the game. What am I talking about? Let's go over the components. Let's get into the gameplay. So first component-wise... You'll notice that there is the big board surrounded by the, the hexagon. You're actually able to construct this hexagon. It's really easy to construct. Next, you're going to have the big board, you, which you'll be making in the middle. It's actually six parts. they got three big parts on the outside and three little parts on the inside. And on the big board, you're going to have a couple different locations. Swamps, plains, jungles, magical caves, and, of course, water. Uh, the other thing is there will be lava that is in there as well, uh, volcanoes, which, as you can guess, are bad. Next, everyone's going to get dinosaurs. So you're going to start with five dinosaurs, and the game goes up to six players, so there's going to be a whole bunch of different colors of dinosaurs, which is always really, really nice. And the dinosaurs all have their own distinct shapes, which is cool as well. So right now I have the one with the horns triceratops and somebody else might have the velociraptor or something like that which is kind of neat so on your turn what you're going to do is you're all going to throw one of your dinosaurs at the same time with the goal of getting two in a location so they can make babies so let's just go ahead and do it and i'll just go ahead and do a quick round right here so nobody else is playing so i'm just going to throw it now the restrictions are right now you have to make sure that you are throwing on the outside of the mountain so right now i'm trying to get Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, that's great. That is really great. Oh, man, I was that was pretty fire. So that was a really great turn for me. So how it works is, and I can show you this right now, anything that's in the ocean or it's in space is gone. It goes back into the reserve. So anything around the outside or in one of the water spaces, once we get water spaces, is gone. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to recover all my dinosaurs. I'm going to start with a pair. So first, I do have two right here, which means they have a little baby they get plus one, so I get three dinosaurs for there. This one didn't have any one, so no baby. This one didn't have any one, so no baby. Now, this one is lost in the jungle, unfortunately, because the jungle will keep you stranded, which means wah, 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 that one stays out there. Now, the other thing is, at the end of an era, you're always going to gain two dinosaurs. You just discover more of your dinosaurs, and hooray, you have two more dinosaurs. But... The last aspect of the game, the most interesting aspect of the game, is one person who has the fewest points is now going to be the geographical upheaval is what they call it. That means that they are going to flip over uh, one of the tiles on the outside and also one of the tiles on the inside first. So with this one, the obvious choice is to flip this one over because then that would make this dinosaur lost. So they would probably flip this one over right here. And maybe we'll just flip uh, this one right here over. And then they're going to draw two of these tiles. Now, they're going to choose one tile to give specifically to one person. So this particular tile means without the index finger. So I would have to throw it without my index finger. And this particular tile would mean that someone has to have their head to one side. So most likely, they would keep this one for everyone. So everyone has to deal with this for the rest of the game. And these will start to stack up. And then one particular person, whoever is in the lead, maybe somebody got uh, two dinosaurs in the magical cave, now cannot use their index finger. But the person who can't use their index 
Legs figure also has to have their head tilted to the side. You're going to get two of these in between each round. Uh, so by the end of it, you will be doing some pretty, pretty weird, wonky stuff when you're throwing. And to show you some of the other stuff that they have in the game, uh, you have to use your non-dominant hand. You have to lay your hand flat. You have to have one of your eyes closed. Uh, one of them makes you jump. One of them makes you do it on one foot. There's all sorts of different things in here. Actually, I should say there's like 10 different things in here that will mix it up. Nine. Uh, but anywho, after the end of four rounds, you're going to total up who has the most dinosaurs, aka the most points, and they will be the winner of Dino Party. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. Alrighty then, Dino Party from Encama. What are my final thoughts? Let's go with the pros, let's go with the cons. First on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a variety of different reasons. Two to six players is a great player count, but I liked it best at the higher player counts. And I would not recommend this as a two-player game. Part of the reason why is you have all the cool tiles that you get to, to divvy out at the end of the round. The person who is in last place gets to do that. But in two players, you are going to have a lot of tiles that you're going to have to deal with. And it just gets kind of ridiculous, to be honest with you, at the end of a two-player game where it's just like, oh, you have to be on one foot and you have to jump and you have to have your eye closed and you have to do this and you have to do that. And I did play this as a two-player game with one of the kids in my class, and they still had fun, and I still had fun, but the game play did suffer. Like, we were literally getting nothing. We were getting no pairs towards the half to end of the game, just because we had so many restrictions, because there's only one person you, you can give that restriction to. It's like, oh, well, I'm not going to give it to myself, so I guess it's for you. Uh, so I did like it best with the higher player count just because you could spread out the restrictions more and you, you just had more people like knocking other dinosaurs because that's a really fun aspect of the game where someone might have a dinosaur like a pair of dinosaurs it's like haha I knocked you into the lava or into the water and that adds a whole other element to the game which I really did like and I thought that was fun. Continuing on with the cons, if you're better at dexterity games than other people, you are going to have a, a definite leg up in this game. Now that being said, that's why, kind of why they have the handicaps. So, you know, I'll take that one with a grain of salt. It's not as clearly defined as in other dexterity games where, like, if you're really good at this game, you're just going to crush people. You might crush people the first round or two, but once people start laying restrictions on you, it's going to be more difficult for you. So I actually felt like that is a pretty good self-balancing mechanism there. Uh, another comment of this game is some people are going to want a little bit more. It's a very light, simple game. And at its core, all you're going to do with this game, especially if you're not in last place, is... Throw dinosaurs, collect dinosaurs, throw dinosaurs, collect dinosaurs, throw dinosaurs, collect dinosaurs, throw dinosaurs, collect dinosaurs, game over. That's it. That's the entire game. If you're not in last place, you're going to do nothing else. Now, you are going to have different ways that you're going to have to do the dinosaurs off the back of your hand or jumping or stuff like that. But it still is a very light game. I would have liked to have seen just an added extra potential layer that you could play with to just give it a little bit more. Um, kids I played with didn't really have that desire, but I would have liked to have seen it. But that's more of a, uh, a nitpick. And honestly, I don't have any too too many huge gripes with this game. Aside from the fact that I probably wouldn't play it again at like two or three players. I like to best the higher player counts. Uh, I really don't have too many complaints with it. Any other cons that I do have with the game? Oh, last con I have with this game is that you need to know going into this game that this game is primarily going to be used as a family game, as a children's game, and maybe potentially as a party game. I didn't get the opportunity to bring this to a party, but I could see it going well, especially if you have it set up on like a higher table that maybe people are standing around like a, a kitchen table or something, or uh, like, like a kitchen area where people are just standing around. I can see this going over really well, just having a couple drinks, maybe even making up your own restrictions as you play the game. And yes, me and the kids in the class did start to make up our own restrictions, and that led to some really nutty zaniness, which was actually a good deal of fun. Um... But yeah, children's game, family game, and maybe party game. Probably not going to be a lightweight filler game. Probably not going to be a gateway game for the most people or a game night game. But if you're in the market for a children's slash family game, I got to tell you something. So moving on to the pros, I think this is a good game. I had fun with this game. I enjoyed this game. And I would play this game with kids whenever they really wanted to, especially if we had four or five or six players. But I'm not the target demographic for this game. This game is aimed at kids because it is a kids game. It's a family game. So what did the kids in my class think? Well, they went nuts for this game. They really did. And I was very surprised by the reception of this game. The first time we played, I was like, yeah, it was good. And I was expecting them to be like, yeah, that's good. I'd like to play it again. But no, no, no. It was just like, oh my gosh, this game is amazing. These dinosaurs are so cool and it looks super awesome. And there's mountains and we got to throw stuff and we get the magic caves and there's lava and there's water. And it's just like, whoa. 
they really gravitated toward this game. And I, and I had a couple six player games going of this, right? Play it with six players and we'd still have two or three people sitting around the table, just watching the game and laughing and enjoying the silliness and the zaniness and helping us come up with different uh, tiles. Cause that's another comment I have in this game. There's only nine of those tiles. I definitely would have liked to have seen more of those tiles. Some more variability in the different ways that people had to fl uh, move, throw their dinosaurs. Um, but you can easily make those up, which is cool. But the kids went nuts for the game, and the kids having so much fun made me have more fun with the game. And, and what's what's to like about the game? Well, first and foremost, it's a children slash family game, and it's easy to learn. It's easy to teach. You know, the rules. I said there's six pages, five six pages, but honestly, there's so little information on some of those pages that it's more like a three or four page rule book. Probably more like one or two. So it is going to be one where you're going to read it. You're going to have it whipped up. You're going to have it set up. You're probably not going to need to go to the rule booklet at all. Maybe once or twice for some fringe rules. It's very easy to learn and very easy to teach, which is always great for a children slash family slash party game. Component wise, the components look great. It's cool. They got the mountains around the outside. You got the the big flower looking thing in the middle. All the dinosaurs are different and distinct looking, and that was actually really neat. And, and that was actually one of the lengthier parts of the game. Each time is when kids are deciding which dinosaur they want to be. Like in a game like Ice Cool, it's very straightforward. There's a brown penguin. There's a blue penguin. There's a red penguin. There's a yellow penguin. There's a purple penguin. It's like which penguin would you like? But no, it's like this. It's like they care less about the color and more about the dinosaur, but then some kids are like, well, man, I really don't like this color, but I love that dinosaur. And, and just stupid stuff like that. Stupid little details like that are things kids love. And if you're making a kid's game, that's the kind of stupid details you need to put in your game. And I don't mean to use the word stupid there, but it is, it's a dumb little thing. Uh, but, but even for me, it's like, I don't want that dinosaur. So, you know, maybe it's not dumb. Who's to tell? um it's a fun game there you go it's a fun game and uh, and i'm gonna say well i think it is a good family weight game the kids have swayed me to tell you that it's a great family weight game that they had a ton of fun with this game and while i did enjoy it at three players and i did enjoy it at two players i definitely think four five and six is the best way to go but really i don't think you can go wrong with dino party especially if your kids like dinosaurs Dino Party is one that is probably going to go over incredibly well. It's 15 minutes, easy to set up, easy to learn, easy to teach, great components, simple gameplay. Uh, it has like house rulable stuff where you can make up your own sort of modifications. And in the end, Dino Party really went over well with my classroom and well with my son. It's going to be one that I'm going to keep in my classroom uh, pretty much for, I think, as long as I have a classroom because this is the kind of game I can play with 5-year-olds, I can play with 11-year-olds, and they're both going to have a great time with it. So there you go, Dino Party from Ancombo. It looks like it might be a cup of tea. Be sure to check this one out. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know. Wow, hopefully this is still relevant and you're not watching this in like 15 years. The upcoming Venom movie, does that get you excited? What are your thoughts? You know what, let's make it a broader question. What are your thoughts on superhero movies focused more on super villains? For me personally, yes, yes, sign me up, yes. I want a Sinister Six movie oh so bad uh i really like the suicide squad even though i know that was a little bit decisive it wasn't the best made movie but i really like the story and i really like the characters and i hope they come out with the suicide squad too i am all for big tentpole blockbuster movies based on supervillains because mo a lot of the time the supervillains have more interesting story than the superheroes and also i feel like with the supervillains you can kind of take more liberties uh with how bad they are like well, I don't know. I, I guess I shouldn't say that. It just kind of annoys me in the Christopher Nolan Batman movies when Batman has a gun and he's just mowing people down. It's like, eh, it really doesn't feel like it captures the spirit of Batman. Also, with those supervillains, you can go for more of those horror R ratings. Like a Carnage movie? Oh my god, a Carnage movie would be stinking nuts! Like, you would have to go with a hard R on that boy, uh, bad boy, and I would love to see that. But let me know in the comments below. Supervillain movies. Are you a fan? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.